Okay, so the Pi 20W is an incredible little computer for the money. $15 gets you a fully working computer. But what extra bits do you need? What's the bare minimums? So first up, we're gonna need a power adapter. Uh, this is USB-C and the Pi 02W uses micro USB, so I've got a little adapter to convert it. But you may already have an old Android charger that can power this device with micro USB. Uh, strictly it needs 2.4 amps, uh, which is a more modern charger, but you can definitely get away with way less power on a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Uh, so you also need an operating system, so a micro SD card is needed for that. Uh, you can run an operating system from an SSD and a USB stick, but we're talking about the bare minimums here. So for this to work, we need to use remote desktop, which is a bit more tricky to set up. I've got a separate video on it, but essentially you're controlling this from a phone, tablet, or a computer. But the performance isn't as good as the Pi Zero 2W can be, and if you're gonna play games, you're not gonna do it via remote desktop. What about if you wanna use it with a monitor or a TV? Well, you're gonna need a mouse and keyboard, or in this case, a trackpad. This is Bluetooth, and it's rechargeable. Because the Pi Zero 2W already has Bluetooth on board, you're not needing any extra connection. You're not taking any extra power from the Pi as well. Now you can use a Bluetooth speaker, uh, but if you're using a television, you'll already have sound coming through the HDMI. So we're not gonna need that on our minimal setup. To power it, we just need a micro USB to USB-A cable because the TV is gonna supply power to the Pi. Now not all TVs will be able to do this, but most TVs in the last 10 years would have a USB socket, probably capable of powering the Pi. If yours doesn't, then you're gonna need that power adapter again. But as my TV works, then I'm gonna leave that one out. Because the Pi Zero 2W uses mini HDMI as its connection, we're gonna have a HDMI to mini HDMI adapter. I'm assuming you've probably got an HDMI cable. If not, they are very cheap and very easy to get hold of. So in our minimal setup, that's everything we need. Now I'm gonna use a Windows computer for this because probably more people have got a Windows computer than anything else. Although that said, I have videos for doing this on iOS, Android, Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. So let's pop the SD card into here, into the SD card reader. Now this little Melee mini PC actually does have an SD card reader on it anyway, so I could have just plugged it in there, but I'm gonna use a reader because probably most people won't have an SD card slot in their computer. So that's booting up Windows. Let's switch into screen capture. Now I'm gonna use a tool called Raspberry Pi Imager. Uh, if you wanna put it on a Windows computer, if you type in Raspberry Pi Imager, and you can see it's in Raspberry Pi Downloads, Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows, and that's an EXE file, so if you double click on that, it will install onto your computer. I've already got it installed, uh, and it's down here, so we'll say yes. Control, Shift, and X. So set hostname, Raspberry Pi.local, enable SSH. Use password authentication, I'm gonna put in Raspberry as the password. Configure Wi-Fi. Now, my Wi-Fi, this is the 5 gigahertz network, so I need to delete the 5 gigahertz bit on my network because the 5 gigahertz won't work on the Pi Zero 2W. Scroll down, set locale settings, you can see Europe GB. Skip first run wizard, that's really important for because um, it wants to do loads of things otherwise uh, and we want to be able to control it remotely. Hit save. And I'm going to choose OS. Now, at the moment, Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit, uh, this is Debian 11, isn't that stable and reliable, although that said, I haven't tried it for a few days and it's getting regular updates. So uh, you, right at the moment, you might want to use Debian 10, and I do talk about that in the last version of Pi News. But if you're watching this in 2022 or beyond, then it, it will be absolutely fine to use this version. So let's click on that, choose storage, uh, this is the SD card, this is the actual storage in the device, so I'm going to click on that and hit right, and yes. Okay, so that's all written, so let's put the SD card into the Pi. Pop that in. So I've got my HDMI cable and my USB, so let's plug this into the back of the TV. Okay, so if we look at the back of my TV, one of the USB sockets, the USB 3 one, is 900 milliamps, which is definitely better for the Pi. 500 milliamps might be too low. So let's plug in the HDMI and make sure I plug the USB into the faster, more powerful socket. So that's just those two. And here's my Pi sticking out the side. For the purpose of this video, I think I'm gonna leave it sticking out the side. And from the front, you can see that the light is flashing. 
Okay, so you can see it started up. You can see it says SSH has been enabled um, and it does say it's a security risk because I haven't changed the default password. Uh, it's also shown on the top right hand corner that there are some updates available. So next step, uh, if I want to pair my Bluetooth keyboard, as is I can't do it because I can't control this to be able to get it to use the Bluetooth keyboard. If you have a mouse and keyboard that you can plug in, that's absolutely fine. And I'll show a less minimal setup, but certainly an easier setup, and especially if you're gonna use more operating systems. But let's get this Bluetooth enabled by using remote desktop. So I'm gonna use my iPad to do this. So let's start screen recording. Volume up, volume down, volume up, volume down. Okay, there's a couple of apps that I need to start off with. Uh, there's loads of other ways you can do this, but Fing is a good way of doing this. So what Fing does is it searches my network for everything attached to it. So I've obviously blurred pretty much everything out, um, but the one we're looking for is Raspberry Pi. And there is Raspberry Pi dot broadband, and uh, the IP address of that is 192.168.1.109. So we need to remember that. Next up, we need this Pi helper, because we're going to SSH, so we're going to control the Pi remotely. Now you can see I've already set it up. I'm going to set up another connection. So let's call this Pi0. The host 192.168.1.109 and the port is 22. Username is pi, password is raspberry. Only because it hasn't been changed. Again, you should change this. Hit save and you can see pi0 is showing up. I'm going to delete this other one, pi remote, uh, just because it's going to be confusing otherwise. So you can see the CPU usage, the memory usage and the disk usage. If I tap on it, you can see at the top I've got GPIO, that would show anything plugged in. I haven't got any GPIO pins on this, uh, so there's nothing there. We've got folder access, so we could actually uh, put things into different folders on the Pi remotely if we wanted to, but I'm concentrating on the terminal for this. Now to be fair, the TV doesn't even need to be on for this bit. Um, so what I want to do is install XRDP. I'm going to update first though. So sudo apt update. And you can see on the screen, the TV screen, nothing's happening. Uh, it is all happening in the background. And now I'm going to do exactly the same, but I'm going to do upgrade, upgrade, return. This might take a while as it's 70 packages. So yes. So this is just updating the software on the Pi. If I had an ordinary mouse and keyboard, it would be absolutely fine. It would just do it because I could click on the update icon in the top right hand corner. You can see my TV is no longer showing a picture. That doesn't matter because I'm still using the Pi remotely. So let's do sudo apt install xrdp. I'm fully aware there's more uh, remote desktop solutions, but I like xrdp. You don't have to sign into anything and uh, it works well for me. That said, uh, or let's say yes to that. Uh, that said, um, I'm going to try no machine and I really need to have another look at VNC. Okay, so that's all done. So let's do reboot. And let's do remote desktop. So XRDP. Remember that 109. You can see I've got 109 here already, but I'll create a new one. Add a PC. 192.168.1.109. And I don't need to configure anything else. Hit save. So now if I click on that one, connect once. Username was Pi in this case, and password was Raspberry. So now you can see the iPad is showing exactly the same as the TV screen, so I'm going to tap on the Bluetooth icon. Uh, I'm going to do Add Device. I'm going to switch my keyboard on. Press and hold the pairing button on my keyboard, and I should get a blue light flashing. There you go, Bluetooth keyboard has come up, so I can tap on that and pair. So it's asked me to enter 164667. One six four six six seven enter so now you can see i've got mouse and keyboard control and everything is working fine this needs to be optimized for the tv uh, and i'll do that in a separate video but let's go back to uh, another way of setting this up without having to do the whole remote desktop bit now as much as i like that setup and it is definitely a setup that requires less power than any other method uh, i prefer using my logitech keyboard and because it uses a usb dongle uh, there's no need to do all of the remote desktop bits. So you set up the operating system, you just use it like you would use an ordinary computer. So you can see I've got a USB hub plugged in here. Uh, this is the power cable that's going to plug into the TV. Uh, and I'm going to try it because I'm not sure if this configuration 
can be powered from the TV uh, because I've obviously added the USB hub and I've added the mouse and keyboard. But certainly from a setup point of view, super, super simple. And it means that you can put any operating system on your Pi Zero and you don't have to worry about remote desktop enabling Bluetooth or anything like that because this will just work. If it does need more power, then you can separately power the device. Uh, so at this configuration, it's being powered from the TV. But if I was to plug a micro USB into here, then I'm powering the Pi Zero 2W separately. Um, but I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to come at this from a minimal setup. So let's plug this in and see if it works. Okay, so this is the setup. This is all getting plugged in now. So HDMI first, then I'm going to plug. You might have noticed flickering earlier on. I think this HDMI is a pretty dodgy one. Uh, I probably should use a better one. So let's plug in the USB and it's definitely powering it up. Again, I'm using the, what was it, 900 milliamp socket on the TV, but let's see if it starts up. Yeah, it started up all right. Uh, let's just see, yeah, the mouse is working straight off, so no issues there. I'm going to shut it down, and I'm going to plug it into the really low-powered 500 milliamp socket. Okay, plugging it in now. It's lit up. We started up on 500 milliamp. That's a surprise, because it says it needs 2.4 amp, and obviously I haven't got a lot plugged into this. Um, this mouse keyboard can be powered d uh, directly from an iPhone, so... You know, it, it isn't something that takes a lot of draw. But I have got the USB hub in there as well. Um, but if you're going to start plugging more and more things into it, maybe then you start to think about, do I need to plug in separate power into the Pi Zero 2W? But again, I'm coming at this from a minimal setup point of view. I'm going to have to try RetroPie with a controller. Okay, so I'm plugged into the 500 milliamp USB. I'm using the four port USB hub so I can plug other things in. I've got my wireless controller for my Xbox 360 controller and uh, as you can see I've changed the SD card. This has got RetroPie on it and let's have a look. And I still haven't got round to doing my RetroPie video. Uh, oh, the audio is a bit loud through my HomePods. Uh, so if I resume you can see that it's working fine. Uh, this is the RetroPie I used in my original 0W, not 02W video. Uh, and it absolutely works fine. Uh, you can see the FPS is pretty high, so it's a 50 FPS at the moment. Uh, this is a PSP game, but it's a PSP, let's quit out of that, the sort of game that you get from the PSP store. Uh, so exit the menu, and you can see I've got other games on there. I'm gonna do a separate video on RetroPie working on this, but as you can see, uh, it's working fine. You can see I've got games on there for the PSP, but if I go back, uh, I've got various different systems that I've got on there, but this is working on a 500 milliamp USB socket uh, powered by the TV. I, I just didn't expect it to work on such little power. And just going back to the keyboard, uh, because I think I've maybe shown it in a more complicated light than it needs to be, uh, this keyboard with most devices uh, is, is super compatible. So I've just put it in pairing mode. If I click add device on my Sony TV, uh, you'll see that it will show up Bluetooth keyboard, click on that. Because I've got a remote control, as long as you've got a way of controlling it, you can pair this to pretty much anything. So 580242, I need to type in 580242, enter. Now if I use function and home, uh, you can see I can navigate around the screen. Uh, I can go into YouTube. Uh, and obviously this is easier on your lap because uh, it's a folding design. But you have mouse control, so I can go up to the search bar, I can type in Lee PSP video, oh yeah, you go, look, Lee PSP video HDR has just shown up. And then enter to select that. Because you can use a web browser on these Android TVs. I guess it's entered a skip. Oh, there you go, so go straight into it. And here it is working nicely with my iPad. So you've got various different shortcuts and things. Mouse control works as well. Don't know if it works with LumaFusion. Yeah, so I can use the, the video I'm editing at the moment. Also works really well with this Samsung Galaxy S8 using an HDMI cable to give me DeX. Uh, so now I've got a very portable computer option. So if I wanted to launch Chrome, or click on all apps, and then when I want to close it up, I can. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, 
and subscribe.